Hi, it's my favorite time of day, the time of day when I get to read a good book to you. Today we're going to read Those Darn Squirrels Fly South. This book is part of a series. We've read a couple of these before. I like to read books that are a series because you get familiar with the characters and it's fun to see what they have to do in this story. This is by Adam Rubin and Daniel Salmieri. And Daniel Salmieri actually took a trip to Mexico to prepare for illustrating this book. Do you remember the characters from some of the other books? See if you can remember any of them and any of the things that happen from the other books we've read about the squirrels. This is a funny book and I think you're going to really like it. Those Darn Squirrels Fly South. We have a telephone booth. Do you know what a telephone booth is? Old Man Fookwire lived at the edge of a town in a beautiful forest full of birds and squirrels, but he was such a grump. He scolded fireflies for being too bright, he yelled at clouds for being too fluffy, and when the lilacs bloomed, he pinched his nose with a clothespin so he wouldn't have to smell their scent. Even for a grump like Fookwire, it had been a glorious summer. He'd spent most of his time painting the colorful birds that visited his backyard. Sometimes by accident, he painted a squirrel. Other times, the squirrels painted themselves. Then Fookwire would shake his old man fist and shout, Those darn squirrels! Do you remember that from the other books? I bet you do, Joey. But now it was fall. The weather had turned crisp, the leaves had changed colors, and soon the birds would fly south for the winter. Fookwire would have to endure the long, cold winter months alone. You might remember from the other books how he feels when it's time for the birds to go. Well, not exactly alone. The squirrels would be there too. Normally, the squirrels spent winters playing ping pong, building ships and bottles, and knitting. But this year, they had other plans. They were curious about where the birds went for winter vacation, so they decided to follow them. Now, not many people know this, but squirrels have a comprehensive understanding of aerodynamic engineering. They built gyrocopters from pine cones. They built gliders from leaves. They even built a zeppelin from an old shopping bag. Those are some big words. I wonder if you can figure out what they mean, even if you've never heard them before, by looking at the picture. Look at some of the things they're building. What do you think their plan is? I think you might be right, Abby. I think they might be going to fly with all of these things that they have built to help them get there. When the first frost arrived, the bonga birds took off, followed by the baba birds and the yaba birds. They circled the house, waved goodbye to Fookwire, and headed south. The flugel birds spent a few minutes scarfing up the last of the farfel seeds. Then he took off too. Fookwire pouted as the sound of flapping wings faded into the distance. He turned to go inside and heard a rustling in the trees. A rustling followed by a whirr, a whirr followed by a buzz. It was the squirrels launching their flying machines one by one. Some of the aircraft flew straighter than others, but eventually they all flew up, up and away from the harvest-colored treetops and into the cool blue autumn air. The old man could hardly believe his eyes. Great googly moogly, he said. It's a whole flock of flying squirrels. Can you see how they're using their machines to fly? The squirrels followed the flugel bird for days. They flew through the night. They flew through the rain. They even flew through turbulence. Finally, just when the squirrels thought they couldn't fly any longer, the flugel bird swooped down and landed gracefully on a beach. 
The squirrels landed with a crunch. The beach was so warm and beautiful and the squirrels were so happy to be done flying, they decided to have a fiesta. They went swimming and ate mangoes with salt and lime. They played the marimba and danced the merengue. The party lasted all night long. Can you figure out what a fiesta is? What's another word for fiesta, do you think? Fiesta is actually a Spanish word for party. You're right. Over the next few weeks, the squirrels made themselves right at home. There were many new plants to snack on. There were also many new birds to see. There were cocoa birds, kiki birds, and caramba birds. There were too many birds to count. One of the birds reminded the squirrels of someone they knew. Deep in the snowy woods, a strange noise woke Old Man Footwire from his nap. It was coming from the telephone. He was getting a call. When he picked up the receiver, the operator asked if he would accept the charges for a long-distance call from the village of Santa Vaca. Then there was a chattering on the line. Those darn squirrels, shouted Fookwire. Do you see where they are? The old man missed the birds, and even though he would never admit it, he missed the squirrels too. So he decided to join them. Fookwire had a car that he kept under a tarp in a shed by the stream. He'd bought it in 1957 and had driven it only twice. He loaded it up with his easel, paints, and brushes, fixed himself a snack of cottage cheese with pepper, and hit the road. Then he drove 12 miles an hour all the way to Santa Vaca. The nice people behind him had plenty of time to admire his car. What do you think the people behind him are saying? Finally, Fookwire arrived in the little vi village. He spotted the flugel bird flying overhead and followed him to the beach. When he got out of the car, the squirrels gave him a big hug. Maybe it was the nice weather, maybe it was the beautiful scenery, maybe it was the squirrels dancing in his pants, but for the first time in a very long time, the old man laughed. Soon, Fookwire set up his easel and began to paint the local birds. Daba Dobo sang the cocoa bird, Bada Bobo sang the kiki bird. Fookwire was so overjoyed the birds here are even more amazing than the birds back home, he exclaimed. Humph, muttered the flugel bird. The sun was very hot. Fookwire sweated, but he kept on painting. Fookwire sweltered, but he kept on painting. Then Fookwire slumped forward, face first, into his painting. The squirrels dragged the old man into the shade and gave him some water. He was as red as a bonga bird. He decided it was time to go home. The squirrels decided to go with him. They'd had a wonderful vacation, but after all, it was almost time for their annual snow fort building competition. They had one last snack of mango, then Fookwire waved goodbye to the birds, and they all piled into the car. The trip back home was much quicker for all of them. The squirrels drove most of the way. Those darn squirrels! Look at his hair blowing in the wind. Can you see what it is? <laughs> I really like that book and I hope you did too. Did you make some comparisons?